February 15, 2003 saw the largest protest in British history. Like millions of others across the world, the British public said no to the invasion of Iraq. Their government ignored them. So two million people marched on Britain's city, supported by millions more, but Tony Blair still took this country to war on what is now apparent was flawed or even fraudulent intelligence. Since then, Britain, much like the US, has entered an era of continuous warfare. It pains me when good pe people, especially in the United States, who were hostile to wars when Bush was waging them, become passive when Obama wages them. Today, in a world more complex and with a so-called war on terror that has spread to many more fronts, Britain's anti-war movement is taking stock. Effectively, what we notice in the United States today is imperial continuity. More drone attacks on Pakistan and Afghanistan and Yemen and Somalia under Obama than there were under Bush. The President of the United States has now the power, legal power, to order the execution of any American citizen, leave alone citizens from the rest of the world. That is the world we live in. So despite boasting the support of millions, has the anti-war movement essentially failed in its objectives of stopping war or even affecting change in foreign policy? I think we did mobilize a lot of people who became very well educated as a result of it. I think we did probably do a lot to stop any direct attack taking place on Iran at that time or indeed since that time. Of course we didn't succeed in stopping the wars. That's not a reason to, to go away. It's every reason to redouble our efforts and say to people there is a different alternative way of doing things. We don't have to arm ourselves to the teeth. We don't have to have global military reach. We don't have to steal other people's raw materials and resources. We don't have to run around the world on behalf of corporate entities, we can instead be a force for moral good in the world by respecting international law and seeking to relate to people rather than uh, the way we have increasingly got involved in wars largely on behalf of the United States. I can't promise success, but I can say doing nothing is not an option. It is true, however, that while there is no public appetite for further wars abroad, an opposition to Britain's ongoing military action in Afghanistan has grown. The numbers at public protests have shrunk in recent years. There is certainly that opposition. The reality is that at the same time we're going through a huge economic crisis where often people's priorities are bread and butter issues like housing, jobs and everyday issues. So I think Western foreign policy is something actually most British civil people are actually concerned about and they do oppose those interventions including the occupation of Afghanistan but at the same time at the end of the day if you're struggling to you know heat your home or feed your kids then there are other priorities. Perhaps one of the most effective tools going forward for the anti-war movement is to highlight the link between the costs of wars abroad and cuts in public spending at home building ties with the UK's growing anti-austerity movement. The government can always afford to shell out money for wars in Afghanistan, but cuts here where they say these services are not affordable, it just shows that actually we should be fighting. Instead of war, waging war on other people, we should actually be defending our services here instead. As long as this system shows us the face of war and austerity, we will show in opposition an anti-war movement and an anti-austerity movement which brings together in unity the kind of forces the only kind of forces that working people really have, their strength in numbers and their capacity to organise. That is what this movement has in the end always been about. The struggle for success in the working class movement is the struggle for unity. Without unity, we cannot win. In unity, we can take down the warmongers and the profiteers. There were also calls to do more to counter the increasing use of drone attacks, which often result in substantial civilian deaths, a tactic which anti-war campaigners argue is counterproductive and will ultimately increase the risk of terrorism at home. Let's be clear, the drone wars are about making sure that there are no body bags of American and British and European troops coming back from the theatres of war. That's what the drone wars are about. 
Now, if they move to drone wars, we move after the drone wars. What the Obama administration has done, worse than Bush, is sanitised killing. That's what drones are, that you have men at computers away in America um, killing people in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Somalia. And the fact that we know now that the American president personally sanctifies most of these killings, ticks off the names, including of Americans, I think is an incredibly um, alienating process. And I mean, everybody I know who knows about Yemen and Pakistan says that is creating new terrorists all the time. It would be strange if it wasn't. Successive British governments have denied that UK foreign policy is one of the root causes of terrorism. Despite the 2005 London underground train bombers specifically citing it as their motivation. Your de democratically elected governments continuously perpetuate atrocities against my people all over the world. And your support of them makes you directly responsible. It later also emerged that intelligence officials had warned of blowback from Iraq prior to the invasion. Also being discussed in London was the fresh push for consolidating Western interests in Africa. Activist Explo Nani Kofi for years oversaw the campaign against proxy wars in Africa and says today's conflict in Mali is the result of a bigger picture of decades old Western interference in the region and a scramble to exploit its resources. Because China was also coming in and trying to give what appears to be more favorable conditions to the African countries, it threatened the West. So the West has to go in to ensure that the control that they have over these resources all over this year since the Berlin Conference is not lost. We have to democratize our states to strengthen the grassroots control on governments and direction of policy. And if we have grassroots organization control, uh, uh, then we would be able to even defend the state. There were several other issues under the spotlight, but one central to many of them was the West's continued support for Israel. We do understand that the crux of the problem in the Middle East today is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and all other problems are transient. They're not going to stay there. We know that. When is the international community has to understand that they cannot put the victimizer and the victim on equal footing when they talk about this conflict? Looking back at Iraq and 2003, Sami Ramadani opposed the regime of Saddam Hussein, but he was also opposed to the invasion. Ten years on, he says the US and the UK have left a poisonous legacy behind. And looking forward, he warns others seeking to overthrow despotic regimes not to allow their struggle to be hijacked by Western interests. I was an exile of Saddam's regime. Uh, we struggled against his regime for 35 years uh, of Ba'athist rule and so on. Uh, but the question is always posed. Would intervention and imperialist back change bring uh, anything good for the people? Would it improve the situation? No. My view was, and the view of most Iraqis overwhelmingly, was no. Saddam's regime is a terrible dictatorship, but this alternative of backing U.S. intervention, U.S.-led in, uh, uh, intervention, would bring an even bigger disaster to the uh, Iraqi people. And similarly, if that war is to, go, to be launched on Iran and so on, and similarly, their attempt to divert the struggle of the Syrian people for democracy into, into ch darker channels and so on. So you have a choice, in a sense. You, you stay opposed to dictatorship, you stay uh, with your people demanding for democracy, but if you don't link that to opposition to imperialist intervention, then the struggle will be led into a blind alley. Hassan Ghani for The Real News, London.